Hi guys, this is going to be a quick one. Um, heat treating basics. Over the last 30 odd years I've only ever used perhaps two techniques and so I don't really know much about it. I don't know what any of these tools are made of, what steels they are. All I know is that um, chisels and uh, allen wrenches, which most of these are, these are chisels, allen wrench, chisel, allen wrench, chisel, allen wrench, and a road point. Um, all I know is they're good for making tools out of. Um, the only thing I would say that if you use one of these road points, um, they're very hard on the top end here where the machine hits them. So you want to make sure you soften that before you use it or before you hit it because it might shatter. Um, yeah, so all I know is no idea what they're made of, but they make good tools. So we'll get rid of those. And the other thing that I know makes good tools, so get rid of these, are these. which I seem to have an awful lot of, old rasps. I get through about one of these a week um, in my shoeing. So I build up quite a collection. And again, I've no idea what, to what steel they are, uh, whether they're D1, D2 or whatever they are. All I know is they make very good tools. You can make, well this I made is uh, for cleaning off the mortar off bricks. Just put an edge on one end, handle on the other, and you bang it along taking mortar off bricks. Um, again, a little sort of chopper thing I chop up firewood with. Anything like that, you can make all sorts of stuff out of, out of rasps. They're really, really good, but I have no idea what tools they are. Tool still it is. This is a little knife that I never finished. That's made out of a little bit of rasp. Um, if you've probably seen my Farry's rasp knife, um, that came out brilliantly, made out of a rasp. So I know it's good steel, but I don't know what it is. Hammerheads, they're another good steel. You can make all sorts of things out of these. Um, other different types of hammers. Um, these two I've made over the years, clipping hammers for my shoeing work. Um, I made a little axe out of one you might have seen the other day. You can do all sorts with them. Again, good steel, no idea what it is but you can play about with it and as long as you don't overheat this this stuff or heat it or, or work it too cold you shouldn't have a problem more things old tools anything that um, has a good edge on it or is tough you could cut one of these off use this hat you know for something or other I don't know what you can make something out of it and it's it's got to be pretty good still because it's got a good cutting edge in there that their teeth in there and they've stay sharp for many many years so again it's good steel no idea what it is but good for making other tools the only thing with all of this is they do need to be tempered or heat treated that means hardening and tempering um, other things you can use um, coil springs which I made a tool out the other day uh, leaf springs all this steel is good steel. Anything that's that's wear resistant from bits of machinery and all sorts, it's good stuff. You can even slightly heat treat mild steel these days because it's got quite a lot of carbon in it. Um, I don't know whether it's intentional or not, but you can put a slight heat treat in them. I made a uh, spring swage where you have um, tools, top and bottom tool on one end and then it's one rain with a, a, a ring on the end, you can actually heat treat that slightly. If you got it to sort of orange hot, the, the, the spring end, and dunked it, that would actually give a slight spring in it. It's not a lot, but it, it, you know, it can happen. I've never used case net to doing, for doing um, case hardening, because quite frankly, it gives such a thin uh, hardness, it's not really worth it in the workshop. So, let's give you a quick demo of what I would do or how I would go about my hardening and tempering.
this is just a bit of ordinary mild steel um, but if you imagine this was something I just made and I wanted to harden it and temper it first of all obviously it's magnetic and what we want to do is heat it until it's not magnetic and you want to do this quite slowly I'm actually going to do it quite quickly just to save time but really you want to do it slowly you want to get it up to about I guess just above a dull orange maybe a bright not quite bright orange let it soak there for a, a few minutes um, you could always quickly whip it out and just test to see if it is magnetic or not if it's not bring it up to a bit bit hotter and then hold it there for a few few minutes not very long just a couple of minutes and then quench it and we should be getting up towards that sort of temperature now have a little look. Obviously this, as I said before, this camera for some reason makes it look a lot hotter than it is. It's not actually that hot. I'm going to get both ends the same. Um, obviously if you were only doing, only wanted to do one end, if you wanted to keep the other end soft then you'd only do one end. But that, see that now, non-magnetic. Completely non-magnetic. So we'd quench that off straight away. You don't really want to let it go cold again or go cooler. Once it's up at that temperature you quench it out. Right. Now that would ordinarily if it was a, a bit of tool steel have gone quite hard by now. In fact it would have gone very hard. If you dropped it it'd probably shatter. But as you can see it's not that hard at all. It still files. It might. It feels actually as though it might have got a little bit of harder, but nowhere near what a bit of tool steel would have done. Now I'm going to demonstrate on this bit. You see, I've polished it up again. This is a bit of bright. I've just run the grinder across it or sander. It won't focus, but you can get the idea. Um, and I'm going to play the torch on it, and hopefully the colours will run up. And as I say, I think I said earlier, the two colours that I tend to use are blue and straw. If it's a hitting tool, like a chisel, I tend to use blue. If it's a cutting tool, um, like a knife or something similar, go more for the straw, and yellow. Um, I will probably put up at the end a couple of charts so you can see the different temperatures but really they're, they're quite meaningless to me I have no idea what type of tool steel needs to be quenched for hardness at what temperature and I have no idea what type of tool steel needs to be tempered at what temperature these are the only ones I know about and basically because I've only ever had to use tools in the workshop. I don't make cutting tools or chisels or anything as a living. I just repair stuff, make stuff for jobs that I need around the workshop. You can see the colours coming up there now. So really, me trying to tell you how to temp harden and temper is, is pretty pointless. There's probably engineers out there with their head, head in their hands saying you're an idiot. But and other people saying why don't you know what stuff there you see the blue down this end purple and then the yellow's coming up now getting up to to what we need yeah people probably saying you know why don't you know what steels are what basically because i've never had to i've never worked for anybody i've always worked for myself apart from when i was an apprentice and we didn't do this sort of stuff then um so i've just learned as i've gone along you know i've used half shafts out of lorries to make tools all sorts of things no idea what it is but i use these simple colours. You can see there quite nicely. Got blue right down the bottom, purpley in the middle and this sort of yellow coming up to straw, or straw coming up to yellow and they would colours would keep going if you kept heating it. So really that's basically it. That's my entire knowledge of heat treatment. 
Now you might say, well that's absolutely useless, but I'm a jobbing blacksmith. You can see the state of my shop, you've seen the work that I do on a lot of my other videos, and they're the techniques I use. If you want to know more, there is bags of info on the internet. So thanks for watching.